Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation which is all to do with solving simple trigonometric equations in a given interval. Uh, so we're going to look at a few examples and then we're going to look at the rules that we will develop whilst we're doing those examples and then there will be an exercise at the end that you can have a go at. So here is our first equation that we are trying to solve. Uh, the equation is sine x is equal to 0.5 and you will notice uh, that there is an interval for the values of x that we are going to find and the reason for that uh, will become um, obvious in just a minute. So the first job that we would have to do in solving this equation is to find what is called the principal value, the, the, the value that your calculator gives you when you perform the action inverse sine of 0.5. Now you will have seen that before when you were doing Sokotoa, when you were dealing with right angle triangles, uh, when you are having to work back to the angle within the right angle triangle, it is common to use the inverse trig functions uh, on your calculator. And this is no exception. So in order to get back to the angle X, we are performing inverse sine of 0.5. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode and just check for yourself that you also get that same value of 30 degrees. So we have solved it. We have found a value of X that works for that equation. But um, if we examine the sine curve closely between those two values of 0 and 360, we will notice that as well as this value that we've just found of 30 degrees, there are others as well, or there is at least one more answer that we could have also have written down. And so the expectation is that you will write down all of the values of X uh, within the interval that you're given. So I've drawn my line across from 0 0.5 and we can now see where that second solution is appearing. And we can find the value of that second solution using the symmetry of the sine curve. So if I just take this section of the curve here, it allows us to see in more detail how we're going to find that second value where the sine curve is equal to 0.5. So just spend a few seconds having a think about what that value of x is. Okay, so here is that value that we're trying to find and using the symmetry of the sine curve, we can see that that value is 180 minus the 30 degrees that we found previous. And so our second solution is 150 degrees. So that's example one. Example two, much the same. This time we are dealing with the cosine curve rather than the sine curve. And you will also notice that the interval within which we have to write our answers down has um, expanded to be between zero and 720. So this, is a, this allows us to examine the cosine curve in more detail and have a look at how many values of x are actually going to work. But first of all, as before, we have to find a principal value. So make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And again, you perform this action for yourself. Make sure that you're happy with that answer of 45.6 degrees. Rounded off to one decimal place. Now, if I want to find the other values of x, then I'm going to need to look at that uh, cosine curve and see where the symmetries are in order for me to find the other values. So this time I've drawn my cosine curve from 0 to 720 and I have shown on my diagram where that principal value is. So inverse cosine of 0 0.7 is giving me that 45.6 degrees. But now if I draw my line across from 0 0.7, I can see all of the other values of X that would also be allowed and we would be expected to write them down. So let's take them one at a time. So here is my uh, cosine curve between 0 and 360 and we can use the symmetry of that cosine curve to find our second value. So just have a think just for a minute how we're going to find that second value that works. And we can see that our second solution is found by doing 360 minus 45.6. So the rule is slightly different to the sine curve we looked at previous. 
and that gives us an answer of 314.4. Okay, so now we have two of our solutions, but there are a couple more that we need to write down as well. And the way that we're going to write down the other two um, solutions is by knowing that characteristic that we learnt about in the last lesson, whereby the cosine curve repeats itself every 360 degrees. So if I add 360 degrees onto each of the two values that I've already found, that's going to give me my next two solutions. So I've got my 45.6, which is my original principal value. I've got my 314.4, which was found by taking the principal value away from 360. And then I've got my third value, which is demonstrated here. By adding 360 onto 45.6, it gives me my third value of 405.6. And then finally, if I add on 360 onto my second solution, that's going to give me my fourth solution which gives me an answer of 674.4. So as you do more of these, you will recognize these rules um, quite easily and we will write them down in just a moment. But at the for the time being, we're just having a, a, a little bit of a, a play around with the, the three functions and, and looking at how we might find the solutions from the graphs. But we will write down some rules in just a minute. OK, so to complete the, the trio of trig functions, here is our third equation that we need to solve, which is to find the solutions of tan x equaling 2. And you can see that the interval this time is between minus 180 and 180. So same again, the first thing we're going to do to find the values of x is to work out the principal value, which is the inverse tangent of 2, which gives me 63.4. And by uh, showing you the sketch again of the tan graph, we can see where that solution lies on our curve. But as before, there are going to be other solutions that also equal to. And so by drawing that line across from uh, the number two, we can see where that second solution is going to be. Now, the tan graph, when we're, when we're solving equations involving the tan graph, it's less complicated than when we're dealing with the sine and the cosine, because there are only one set of solutions that you need to consider, because the tan graph repeats itself every 180 degrees. And so to find any of the other solutions that might be in range, we need to simply add and take away 180 degrees away from that principal value. So the tangent function is often the easiest function to deal with when solving trig equations. So we can see that the uh, answer that I, re I need is going to be found by taking away 180 from the principal value. And that's going to give me an answer of minus 116.6. So 63.4 is my principal value. And then if I take 180 away, my second solution is minus 116.6. OK, so now that we've uh, played around with the three trig equations using both sine, cosine and tangent functions, uh, it's time to write those rules down that we've just mentioned in our notebook. So this is just going to be a, a copying exercise that will allow you then to refer back to uh, the rules if you need to for the for the exercises that are to come. So we'll go back to the uh, sine function. So if we are being asked to work out um, values of x for an equation that looks similar to this one, our first job would be to find the principal value. So all of this can be copied down in your notebooks. So we do that by uh, working out inverse sine of theta, and that will give us our first angle x. We then find the second solution using the symmetry of the curve. So we would take the principal value away from 180 to get our second solution. And then we can find all our other solutions by adding or subtracting 360 degrees from the first and the second solutions.
OK, so here are the rules for when we are solving equations of the form cosine x equals theta. So values of x are what we are trying to find. So we find our principal value by uh, doing the inverse cosine of theta. That will give us our first value of x. Then we get our second solution using the symmetry of the cosine curve, which we, we said was to do 360 degrees minus that principal value. And then as with the sine curve, because it has a period of 360 degrees, you can then add and subtract 360 degrees from both of those two solutions in order to get any others that we require in the range that we've been given. And then finally, um, and again, these can all be written down in your notebooks. The third type of equation would be the ones where we are solving tan x equals theta. So again, we find our first solution, our principal value by doing inverse tan of theta. That will give us our first value of x. And then we don't have to worry about a second solution as we do for sine and cosine, we simply then have to subtract 180 degrees or add 180 degrees as many times as we like from our principal value. Good, so to practice the skills that we've learned so far, there is an exercise that we can do, which is on page 74, exercise 4.1, uh, check your answers regularly in the back of the book. Uh, any other problems that you might have with the exercise, please ask your classroom teachers. And then when you're ready to move on, I will see you on the next slide. OK, good. So now that we've practiced uh, those uh, types of question where we have uh, a single value of x, sine x, cos x, tan x, Let's move on to a couple of examples that are a little bit more complex. So we've still got the interval. Uh, we have to find the values of x between 0 and 360. But the equation that we are being asked to solve has multiple angles within it. In other words, we've got two lots of x within the equation rather than one lot of x. So the way that we're going to approach this is we're going to work out the values for 2x. And then once we've found them all at the end, we're going to half them all in order to find my values of x. So to make sure that I don't write too many angles down or indeed uh, make sure that I don't write too few angles down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the interval uh, so that instead of it telling me what values of x I need, it's going to tell me what values of 2x I need. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply the original interval by 2 and that means uh, multiplying everything within it by 2 and now I know that my values for 2x that I'm going to be finding in a moment have to lie between 0 and 720 and that's going to be my indicator as to when I need to stop calculating angles. Okay good so here is my sine curve once again and here is my minus 0.6 and I've gone all the way up to 720 due to the adjusted uh, interval and I can see that if I take that line across from minus 0.6 there are actually four values that I am hoping to find and then once I found those four values for 2x I'm going to half them all to give me my values of x. Now, I just want to put it out there that you don't have to draw the graph every time you're doing a solving equations question. But for the purposes of this particular example, it's quite nice to have the graph drawn so you can see exactly how many angles you need to write down. So my first solution, as before, is going to be the inverse sine of minus 0.6 which gives me a value of minus 36.9. Now, this principal value that we've been given here does not appear on my graph, uh, but I still need to write it down because I'm going to use this value to find some of the angles that I do require. So even though this answer is not in the range that I need, it's still an important answer to write down for now, 
and then I can ignore it later on once I found my other values. So my second solution, I mean, this is doing exactly the same as we did for those previous examples. I'm taking my principal value away from 180. Quite a nice example, uh, this one, because it does uh, highlight the fact that we do get uh, clashes of signs. So we have to be careful here. So 180 take away the negative value becomes uh, plus 36.9, giving my second answer of 216.9. And you can see that answer clearly shown on the diagram. And then at that point, as before, I can add 360 as many times as I need to to both of these answers in order to get my other values. So uh, 216.9, and then I'm adding 360 onto the minus 36.9 to give me 323.1. I'm then adding 360 onto the 216.9 to give me 576.9. And then finally, I'm adding 360 onto the 323.1 to give me 683.1. But what it's important to recognize, and, and, I've, and I've shown this within my solution, is that all of these answers are for values of 2x, not for x. And so my final, um, my final stage to get in my values of x are to divide them all by 2. And you will see now that as I do this, the answers for 2x that were between 0 and 720 are now values of x between 0 and 360 exactly what I was required to find uh, in the original question. So I'm just dividing each of my answers by two. Uh, I would suggest that the values for 2x, these ones here that I will highlight, I would suggest that you write these down maybe to more than one decimal place if that's the required level of accuracy, so that when you divide them all by two, these values that you're finding for x are exact. OK, and there we have an example of multiple angles. Now, you could, of course, have 3x, you could have 4x, you could indeed have a half x. Uh, but by adjusting that interval at the very beginning, you're allowing yourself um, the opportunity to see how many values need to be written down before you make that final adjustment. Uh, and one other thing to say about this question, quite often the um, biggest mistake that we find with questions like this is that students find their first value for 2x and they half it straight away to find x and then deal with it as they've always done with the with the in this case the sine function so please don't do that make sure that you get all the possible angles written down first and then divide them all by two at the very end as i've shown you here in this example OK, good. And here is our final example, uh, very similar to the last one. But instead of having uh, a multiple of X within our equation, we've got X plus 30. Uh, but the method that we would use to solve this equation is exactly the same as we did in the last one. So the first thing we must do is to change our interval, change our range. So with it being X plus 30, I'm going to adapt the original interval and I'm going to add 30 to each of the values within it. So uh, you can see that the old interval has become x plus 30 between minus 150 and 210. And once again, that's going to be an indicator as to when I need to finish writing down my angles. So again, here is the graph of tan x. You do not have to draw this uh, every time you get a, a solving equations question, but it's just nice to have it for our examples. So this is the line drawn across from 0 0.5, and I can see uh, how many solutions I'm expecting to have to write down. So first of all, let's get our... Um, principal value, so inverse tan of 0 0.5 gives me 26.6, which is within the range that I am looking for, so that's good. Uh, and then with the uh, tangent curve, I know that I can find other solutions by adding and taking away 
180 degrees as many times as I like. So I've added 180 on to get my 206.6. Uh, that is within the interval of minus 150 to 210, so I know that that's perfectly acceptable. And then I know from the diagram and from the interval that I don't have to find any others. But don't forget that all of these answers that I found here are not for x equals, they are for x plus 30 equals. And so the final job at the end is to take 30 away from each of my answers. And that gives me final solutions of minus 3.4 and 176.6. And you can see that these two answers that we've ended up with are within the minus 180 to 180 that we've been asked to find. OK, good. So uh, lots to practice there. The more you practice, obviously, the more you will be comfortable with not only these uh, ideas that we've just been looking at in terms of the addition and the multiple angles but also of course the more times we have a go at questions like this the more likely we are to remember the general rules for how to solve sine cosine and tangent curves and with this being a topic that's going to continue throughout the whole of the two years of your A-level it's very much uh, an important thing to learn these rules now so that you are comfortable with the more complex questions that you're going to get later on. So have a go at these two exercises. Use the answers in the back of the textbook to help you to make sure that you've got them right. Uh, and any problems that you might have, um, please make sure you speak to your classroom teacher. But that's it for solving trig equations. And I look forward to speaking to you on the next presentation. Thank you very much.